and uh, welcome back to my channel. Um, in today's video, uh, I just wanted to share with you uh, an article uh, which I came across recently. It's an old article from 2015, so it's not. Um, uh, what's the word? It's not. Um, up to date, it's an old article from 2015. Um, I actually came came across it first on Twitter, um, and it was the very first thing I first I'd heard about it. And the article was from Disability News Service. So, as I say, it's an old article, but nevertheless, it does show um, what some people in the Labour Party. Um, think about people on benefits and who are out of work. Um, now, you might be forgiven for thinking that obviously the Labour Party is supposed to represent everyone, and particularly people who are on low incomes and people who are um, the most people who are like at the bottom levels of society. Um, you'd expect Labour to represent disabled people, uh, people who are out of work, people who are disenfranchised in whatever way. Obviously not being able to work is a major sort of disenfranchisement of sorts. You are essentially barred from being productive because of your disability. Um, and you therefore cannot earn your own income, so you have to uh, rely on benefits. Um, Unless you're rich enough, obviously, to be outside of the system, but most people who can't, most people who are uh, out of work or disabled and can't work, <laughs> have to apply for some benefits. Um, so obviously, that makes you vulnerable to um, government decisions around benefits and things like that. And benefits are like a pittance, so already. Um, and so, yeah, so you'd expect Labour to be the party that would represent your interests. Because the Tories definitely don't. <laughs> um, and uh, I've always voted Labour. Um, and I've never in my life vote Tory at all. Because um, Tories just do not support the interests of people like me. Um, and... I will still vote Labour because there's no alternative really. But the thing is, is that um, at the moment there isn't. But the thing is, is that um, this 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 um, article is a, is specifically about um, Rachel Reeves. I think that's right. Who at the time, because the article, as I said, was 2015, so a long time ago. She has tried to defend herself, but the point, but the fact of the matter is, this does show what she actually thinks, because she wouldn't have said it otherwise. Um, and it was not, and and what she said was originally quoted in the Guardian newspaper, and at the time she was shadow sec, shadow secretary, I think, for work and pensions. I can't remember. Anyway, what she said was, we don't, and this I'm directly quoting from her. We don't want to be seen, and we're not, a party to represent those who are out of work. And I'm like thinking, well, who the hell does represent those who are out of work then? We're not a party to represent those who are out of work. That's a pretty strong statement. You know, no matter how much she later comes on to try and justify what she said, and she did later try and show that Labour supports the welfare state and everything. Um, but no matter what she said after that, that's a really strong statement. There's no room for misinterpretation there. No room for misinterpretation. We don't want to be seen, and we're not the party to represent those who are out of work. What an awful thing to say. So who represents those who are out of work then? That's what I want to know. What party? Because the Tories don't represent those who are out of work. There's a Socialist Worker Party, but... Who are, who, are, who are my guesses would, but they're not like that powerful. Um, 
and also it does annoy me a little bit that they have the worker aspect there because when you because they should really be called the Socialist People's Party because in a way emphasising the work aspect immediately kind of alienates those who for no fault of their own are out of work um, and yeah so what party actually genuinely represents those who are out of work she said Labour are a party of working people formed for and by working people so what about those who've you no know, fault their own? Can't fucking work! <laughs> it makes me so angry. Like, seriously! It makes me so pissed off. Like, there are people like me, no fault, fucking up, we can't work. It's not, so it's not a choice. It's not something we decided on. I would love to work, I want to work. But I can't work because of my disability. And that's no fault of my own. That's just, so, that's just my life, like my lot in life. Unfortunately, I have a very severe disability with OCD, which makes me terrified of germs, which is awful. So I can't work because I do, I'm so unpredictable. And my executive functioning impairments, um, all the rest, I don't need to go on and on, you know what I mean, but I can't work. I can't work, like, I, you know, and I try and, and, I, try and I do lots of voluntary activities and things like that. Um, and as much as I can, because I like to be productive, I'm the least la lazy person in the world. I like to be productive, I like to be doing things, but I can't work. That's not my fault. You know, that is not my fault. I'm really industrious, I like to do things. I mean, anyone can tell you that. Like, all the groups I attend online, I'm constantly trying to do things as much as I'm able. But the fact is, I'm really disabled and I can't work, and that's not my fault. And I don't want to be reading stuff, these people saying... Labour are a party of working people formed by for working people, as if I don't exist, as if people like me are just an inconvenience. Like, basically, we don't exist because we happen to commit the crime, the sin, of being born disabled. And it basically is treated like a crime. I often say that I've never, I've never, um, what's the word, I've never done anything, I've never broken the law, I've never done anything, like, that bad, um, apart from being born disabled, I often say that, only half jokingly, because it's true, because if you're disabled, people do, it is basically treated like you've committed a crime, like you're basically, you're not allowed to enjoy yourself, if you're seen enjoying yourself and you're disabled, oh my god, benefits are too high, we need to cut benefits because they're not allowed to enjoy themselves, basically, and benefits are already a pittance anyway, but if you're seen, say, enjoying yourself, that's what some Tories think, they literally think you're not allowed to enjoy yourself. Like, I bet some, that, uh, that's what some people think. It's like you always have to justify yourself and it's like the pittance you get for not being able to work, which isn't a choice, that's something that has happened to you and you can't control. The pittance you do get is almost like people are watching you and like how you're spending it. Like you're not even allowed to be an adult. Like people are constantly judging you and basically it's almost like you have to justify yourself every single day because it's taxpayers' money and stuff like that. Um, so you're constantly treated like a sinner, you're constantly treated like you've committed a crime, when it's not even your fault. Um, and that obviously <laughs> can really shred your self-esteem, unless you're very strong and resilient, and able to have a sense of internal self-worth outside of what people think about you, because you haven't committed any crime, you haven't committed a sin. That's all ideology, but that's basically, does eat away at you, even, no matter how, <laughs> no matter how strong you are, that obviously does eat away at you. Because it cannot, possibly not. I can give you an example. My mum, who sadly died. But her, um, her, one of her friends, her ex-friend now, but one of her friends when she was alive, she had um, a, a son who um, had Asperger's. Very severe Asperger's, I have to hasten to add. Um, you know, like, really quite disabled. Although he could come across as less disabled than he actually was. But he was very disabled. Um... He actually thought, he bought into this whole lie about disabled people not being able to enjoy themselves. And he basically, and he received benefits and he ended up almost starving himself because he thought he didn't deserve to eat well. That's what I mean. And some people who are really vulnerable and literal can actually internalise, because he was autistic, I guess he took it very, very literally, like this stuff. Um, and yeah, really harmful to people like that as well. Um, but so, as a response to this, what um, what we've said, um, Bob Ellard, who's a member of Disabled People Against the Cuts, that's a great organisation, I guess they're the one 
You're not even a political party. Maybe they need to become a political party because no one else really represents disabled people anymore. Um, but currently they're not a party, they're just like um, an interest group um, or a, an activist group, uh, a protest group. Disabled People Against the Cops. DPAC. Um, steering group said that he had actually resigned his membership of the Labour Party. I'm no longer a member of the Labour Party. I was when Jeremy Corbyn was um, I was when Jeremy Corbyn was the um, shadow lead. But I'm not a member anymore because they're too right wing. I'll, I'll vote for them because obviously I hate the Tories and there's no other party that um, you know, and it's in my interest that Labour get into power because anyone's better than the Tories. But you know, I can't, can't I can't be a member anymore. If they become more left wing again or they change, then I will. Um, considering I said they don't represent me anyway, like you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is quite a political video, by the way. Obviously, but you know, politics affects our lives, so you know. Um, but yeah, Bob Ellard, he's from member of the Disabled People Against the Cart Steering Group, so it resigned his membership of the party as a result. He said, as it is clear, non-working disabled people are not wanted within UK Labour. Deepak said that the remarks were a huge disappointment because you would expect Labour to take a stand against what the government is doing to the unemployed and disabled people who cannot work and rely on benefits. And is the assumption that claiming benefits only happens to others, slightly apart from the rest of human race, and who don't deserve to be represented, although already most politically marginalised, an unrepresented group. It would be a bit like, because it does feel, that's what it feels like. It feels like segregation, basically. We wouldn't do it to any other group. We wouldn't say, we wouldn't say, oh, by the way, we don't represent black people, or we don't represent immigrants. Well, or we've never been, a, well, actually, actually, they might well do that. I wouldn't put it beyond you, by the way, for someone in Labour to say we're not the party of immigrants. I wouldn't put, I wouldn't put, I, you know, we don't represent immigrants' interests. I wouldn't put it beyond. I, I seriously could imagine someone actually saying that. Some right wing could, could actually, I could imagine. Sorry, excuse my language, but that's how I feel about these people. They really piss me off. But seriously, I could actually imagine someone actually basically saying that. But they're supposed to represent everyone. It's really, really divisive. So yeah, I just had to get that out of my system. And if um, Rachel, what's her face? I would give her a piece of my mind. Seriously, I'd give her a piece of my mind. I really would. Whew. Yeah, but let me know what you think. Okay, so moving ahead and I'm too now because I just want to clarify some issues on another video I was talking about, some loose ends on the uh, topic of the gentrification of disability. So moving over to video number two now.